The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. in this morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. It is Wednesday the 3rd of November 2021 and you are on the clock with Erin Green. On the clock we have we engage organizations, institutions, social and cultural leaders and ordinary people to better understand the impact of public policy, private sector development and emerging social and consumer trends. On the clock we have conversations that help us understand and navigate a rapidly changing Bahamas. But look, I was ready to jump right into the show. Well, good yawning this morning. We got lots to talk about. In fact, I want to title this show, Fire in the Ocean, Fire in Cat Island. Ah, boy. I want to say good morning to the Honorable Philip Brave Davis and the Honorable Lady Anne-Marie Davis and the entire team, Bahamian delegates, in Glasgow, representing the country in this most important series of conversations. And then I want to say big up to Philip Brave Davis for an inspiring speech. Now, I can say this, you didn't bring the fire that Maudley brought, but that's okay. I like the duo. I like the strategy. It's like fire and ice. It's like good cop, bad cop, right? You let her hit them with the fire. They look at you, and they don't realize that uh, what you're bringing is a refined fire, refined by age and wisdom and experience. I liked the presentation. It was not as fiery as I. An anti-imperialist, anti-capitalist would have bun upon the stage, but it was very good. It was extremely good. And as we start the show, I want to read just a couple of clips briefly from the Honorable Prime Minister's presentation. One inspiring statement was, quote, every leader before us has postponed until tomorrow what needed to happen yesterday. And now, tomorrow is here, today. And countries like mine are out of time. And another important and inspiring quote from his presentation. We in the Bahamas will do what we can, but the limits of what our nation's efforts can accomplish are stark. We cannot outrun your carbon emissions. We cannot outrun the hurricanes which are growing more powerful. And we cannot outrun rising sea levels as our islands disappear beneath the seas. Hurricane Dorian, that monster Category 5 hurricane, which devastated two of our main islands, feels like it descended upon us just yesterday. We still don't know exactly how many died. And some people still tremble at the first drop of rain. But every day, our yesterday is already becoming your todays and fast becoming all of our tomorrows. But today, today, we can still do something. That's what we elected you for, sir. That's it right there. That is a good beginning. And many people many of which were your naysayers. I want to say thank you for that. Now, Kermit, can we play that clip from Mia Motley? I just want to share with some from what Mia said as well. I had to read 
from our prime minister face. I will see some of y'all trying to big up Mia Motley, like trying to call Mia and ask her to come over and send in her resume. Listen, Mia, we good, you know. Use my cousin. I descended from Barbados too, but we can stick with Brave for the minute. Because he ain't doing a half bad job. When you ready, Kermit? This is a clip from Mia Motley's speech. Do some leaders in this world believe that they can survive and thrive on their own? Have they not learned from the pandemic? Can there be peace and prosperity if one third of the world literally prospers and the other two thirds of the world live under siege and face calamitous threats to our well-being? What the world needs now, my friends, is that which is within the ambit of less than 200 persons who are willing and prepared to lead. Leaders must not fail those who elect them to lead. And I say to you, there is a sword that can cut down this Gordian knot, and it has been wielded before. The central banks of the wealthiest countries engaged in $25 trillion of quantitative easing in the last 13 years. 25 trillion of that, 9 trillion was in the last 18 months to fight the pandemic. Had we used that 25 trillion to purchase bonds, to finance the energy transition, or the transition of how we eat, or how we move ourselves in transport, we would now today be reaching that 1.5 degrees limit. Thank you. Now, two things I want to say. I know some of y'all heard the UN say yesterday, I think, like if, you know, $6 trillion, was it $6 trillion? Could, if we could get $6 trillion, we could end world poverty. And Elon Musk said, look here, I'll give you the money if you could prove how the money will reduce poverty and end world hunger. That's what it was. And I just want to say, after listening to Mia Motley just now, put Mia Motley on it. Because just then she identified not just a problem, but a solution to the problem. See, Elon, we got something for you, you know. By the time we put Brave and Mia Motley on you, and the rest of you countries, it could be over. But just a quick note, as long as the leaders of small island developing states and the political class continue to unfairly, inequitably, and unjustly consume the limited resources of their respective states, this is merely rhetoric. Don't just say it on the big stage, Honorable Philip Brave Davis and Honorable Mia Motley. You get to live it at home as well. And this goes to the big G7 and G20 countries too. We expect you to live the principles that you have expressed and will continue to express at this conference. The good yawning this morning. So let me tell you all about the show I, we have today. My guest today is Mr. Sidney Isaacs, co-organizer of the Cat Island Rake and Scrape Festival. And today I've asked him to come in and discuss with us an, an, an unfortunate incident that occurred recently in Cat Island, where there was a devastating fire at the regatta site. And so I thought it's very fitting, like all of these things, this discussion, and happening right now in the midst of COP, on the heels of what I think is a brilliant presentation by Philip Brave Davis, the representative for Cat Island. Now here's why that's important. See, our prime minister, the representative for Cat Island, is in Scotland at COP26, representing the region, the country, and his constituents in Cat Island in discussions about how we, the global community, are going to ensure that all humans can live a life free of violence. And in this instance, violence, is, violence means 
the negative impact of weather changes, right? And the impact from behavior, from people who could change their behavior but refuse to because nobody could force them to. And that behavior negatively impacts our lives, right? And it's a beautiful thing because here's, here's, why, here's why it's important. See, if the modeling is correct, and in 100 years, the vast majority of our 3,000 islands will be underwater, Cat Island is one of the only spaces where there will be habitable land. Cat Island, Mayaguana, and North Andrus, Morgan's Bluff, the high points. And so, while we don't really think about our family islands, maybe when it's election time, maybe when it's fruit time and you want to know when the fruit come into Nassau, we think about it. Or maybe we go on a bougie staycation. But the family islands will be the center of our strategy for survival. And these three particular family islands, right? Now, we've been talking about Cat Island a lot in light of Iris Munker's video, Columbus's San Salvador, that we discover is what we, call, what we call Cat Island today. But we don't really talk about North Andres and Mayaguana a lot. So I can tell you briefly why those two places are extremely important, just as important as Cat Island. Cat Islanders, we ain't gonna fight. I know you all, important, important. So, Andres and Mayaguana, have this thing in common. Did you know we have both rapid land formation and slow land formation taking place in the Bahamas all the time? See, Mayaguana is where the rapid land formation occurs. Mayaguana is sitting on a different plate. And some modeling suggests that as sea levels rise, right, that the Mayaguana plate, where Mayaguana is, that the water will not behave in the same way. But Meguana sitting on some lava rock. And that lava rock, however it behaves, it ain't like the average Bahamian. It weakens fast, fast, fast. And so I know people whose forefathers have built docks, and those docks have been consumed by the land, not the ocean, consumed by the land in their lifetime. We got rapid land formation occurring on the island of Meguana. Now, when we move our way north, northwest, north up to Andrus area, that's where we have slow land formation taking place. See, this is why the Uitic sand, the aragonite, this is why it's so valuable. Not for that thing, that wealth that you can extract and turn into fiat currency and buy car and house with, but because this thing that the earth produces and decided to produce primarily in the Bahamas creates land. And when the Uitic sand is pushed over the high water mark and gets hit by the fresh water, it turns into rock. And so I stood on rocks that did not exist when Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bahamas. See, he can't claim them rocks. He can't say, I claim these in the name of the queen because they didn't exist then. In fact, it's the blood, sweat, and tears of the Africans thrown off of ships to volunteer themselves into the water that build them rocks. The thing valuable bad, but not in the way that we traditionally sense. And so while both the Honorable Philip Brave Davis and Mia Motley's presentations were brilliant, I want them to know, like my uncle told me when I was in 10th grade, you got to... A for achievement, but you got to C for effort. I'm going to need you to try a little harder. Because we can see that there's far more value to be extracted from these islands than we think. Anyway, I just wanted, sort of wanted to tie that together. I want you all to be as inspired by this place as I as get inspired by this place. Even when I'm in traffic and I run hard and I look up and I see the police officer on a cell phone, you know, and I get, I suck my teeth. 
But still, when I pick up my head and turn it to the right, there's something right there to inspire me to figure out a solution for me and that officer who obviously ain't got no radio because something wrong and y'all don't think they need radios even though they need radios, hey. Hey, it ain't her fault. Anyway, what a beautiful place to be with so much inspiration around you all the time. Anyway, I see you, caller, and you've been there dedicated on that line. I got 30 seconds because I got to get into the show. You're on the clock. Yes, sir. Good morning to us. Good morning. Yes, you know, uh, I guess uh, Dave Davis, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a conflict of interest. Is, is there any oil drilling in Trinidad? They have oil in Trinidad, right? Is there oil in Trinidad, you say? Yeah, right, they have oil in Trinidad, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, so, so she, 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 she's her too. No, but right. she's from Barbados. She has a conflict of interest. She has, she's from Barbados. Uh, right, and I have to put it, you know, we, we, we know it. Uh, the problem is with right by now in the United States on global. Because, do right. me a favor, you break in right up. Like, I could barely, barely hear you. Find a clearer line and give him a, a call back. Thank you for that. Let me just read a couple of these texts quickly. Uh, it's sort of related. I got a video a few days ago about a couch that had been dumped on Cowpen Road. It was being shared widely, widely, and the person who shared the video said that uh, somebody came and burnt the couch to the ground trying to hide the evidence. <laughs> and so we're glad that you tried to hide your evidence because you know you did something wrong. Stop doing foolishness. Bahamians, you see, it's not snitching. If I see you dump a couch in the bush, it's not snitching because I had nothing to do with it. Me and you are not in this crime together. I'm not a trash dumping in the bush uh, aficionado. So it ain't snitching. Stop doing foolishness. People can tell on you, and you can't get upset. Caller, you on the clock. Good morning, caller. You there? Good morning. Yes, I, 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 I come closer to the, to the uh, phone. Uh, but, but what I want to say is they, they both have a conflict of interest. You know, that's why the question was, was put to, to Mr. Davis, to Prime Minister Davis, about oil drilling in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. You know, besides the environmental issue of it, you see, the fossil, this fossil fuel, you know, as well as we know that the, the issues that, that these nations have with dealing with climate change and the cost is, is taxation of, of those who have this money. I mean, you can't tax the poor, they don't have it. You know, mm -hmm. taxing the rich, taxing the wealthy. That's the problem by right now. Now, look here. Right I, the United States. So pause right so there. I, you said something very interesting. I got to go, but I, wanna, I just want to interrogate that for a second, right? You said something like that you're taxing the poor, but the poor ain't got no money, right? I want you to, for a second, imagine that Brave is a poor person. He, he, he sound like a rich person. He look like a rich person. But imagine that Brave is a poor person representing a country of poor people, right? And all us is poor. And they having the same conversation, you know. And Brave is telling them, Why you, what you taxing the, for, the poor for? We ain't got no money. What you putting this on us for? We ain't got no money. And maybe what Brave is doing is this, right? Brave is saying, look, you know that uh, the global economic platform and policy disadvantages developing countries in the face of developed countries wanting to maintain an advantage in the globe. And so unless we have actual viable streams of revenue and, in, and, 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 and spaces for industry that will allow us to compete on the global scale, then we're going to have to continue to do risky, dangerous things like pump oil out the ground and run drugs so as we could come and pretend to be decent people like y'all. Like maybe that's the conversation Brave is having with them. Sometimes you got to let the politicians be sneaky, you know. Sometimes you got to let them be subversive. Because at some point, that's what we're saying. What we're saying is you keep telling us we got to pay these taxes, despite the fact you know we don't have any means to make the money to pay the taxes. So maybe we're going to have to do some things, like uh, create or participate in a whole narco economy. And that's not just poor people lazy so they can run drugs. That is a response to the war on drugs and the Monroe Doctrine. Right? Anyway, that ain't what Brave, I ain't saying that's what Brave was saying. I'm not saying that's what Brave was saying, but what if that's what he was saying? 
because in case you all didn't know it, we poor. In the face of those other countries, we're poor. And it doesn't matter how much work we do, as long as they're in control, we'll always be poor. Because poor is subjective, it's relative. We'll always be poor. Anyway, man, call us. Okay, we, it's 1026, I got uh, two minutes. Call you on the clock. That's a good morning, Ms. Green. Good morning. You know, these conversations never cease. You know, then I look at the world in general and international uh, um, news and everything. When I look at the elites of the so-called earth that we live on, every morning they wake up the billions and trillions that they claim that they have personally. They're in cash, stocks, bonds, property, whatever it is, jewels, whatever it is. They wake up every morning wanting more. They lead the world in all these different organizations, the United Nations and so forth. Whenever you see one of them retire and everything, you ever observe that the only thing they're really interested in is the amount of money they have and what they leave to their family. For example, the queen is said to be the richest woman in the world. From 1953, when she ascended the throne, she had inherited all the royal jewels that passed down from generations from King Henry VIII and now right down. Oh, I thought she was going to say from King uh, Mustafa because some of the things she inherited... Descended no, from other families, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Sparky, but I got to... I'm talking about what she inherited now. Yeah, yeah. We got to keep in, going. In her time, she didn't send out people like to walk the valley them to plunder pirates and so forth. They stole them back in the day. England did not no gold. All of those gold and diamonds and jewels came from Africa around Mexico and all over the place. All right, Sparky, they, listen. You, I got I to gotta push you along because it's like me and you having a private conversation. I excited, but the other... We got to push the conversation along. Hi, sorry, there you go. Caller, you on the clock. Good morning, caller. Scotty Davis is talking away so long with you here in Pretty High Grand. Good morning, Brayman. How you doing? We got 30 uh, seconds. I, I'm holding. Uh, I am, uh, you know, I've heard you said something about uh, poor, right? Yeah. The thing is, those politicians, a lot of them are not poor. Okay? Okay. Uh, but a lot of Bahamian people are poor. Mm-hmm. And those people, politicians, all of them getting rich off the back or on the ignorance of the Bahamian people. Okay? That and a little math. That a little, and a little math. I said that and a little math, but we got to keep it going, Bremen. Okay. And the other thing is, right? The thing is, when you're going to want to drill oil, you con- uh, from out of our waters, you contribute, you contributing to um, uh, uh, global warming, because when they hit the rain, uh, the the, the uh, rocks, the earth going to start cracking up, and what we going to have problem? You 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 um, uh, giving people license to build on the the uh, marine um, uh, uh, okay okay habitat yeah okay the. Uh, the the the, the uh, swamp land, okay. You're cutting down the hills. You're giving license for uh, the ships to be running through our 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 waters, yes, sir. smoking up the um, uh, you know the atmosphere. Uh-huh. You got to think of those things and alle- alleviate those things, and then you go and speak for on our behalf. Thank you, thank you very much, Bremen. I think that's a very good policy position. I'm sorry, Carlo. I think what we got to do is we're going to go to a break, and then when we come back from the break, we're going to find out what's going on in Cat Island. And trust me, we can start paying more attention to our family islands. Stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We'll be right back. Corporation advises its customers that the corporation will commence disconnection of all outstanding accounts beginning Monday, November 15th, 2021, in both New Providence and the Family Islands. Customers with outstanding accounts and financial agreements are requested to ensure that their accounts and financial agreements are brought up to date as soon as possible to avoid an interruption in service. Should you need to speak with a customer representative, please visit them all at Marathon location or the corporation's head office on University Boulevard between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday 
or via local banks. The corporation's website, pay by phone by dialing 3025630 or any cash and go, Omni Flash Cash or Sun Cash locations. Like what you're hearing on the show? Want to support the conversation? Sponsor on the clock today. Call Janet Lees at 302-2304. That's 302-2304. Be the solution. Sponsor on the clock of Aaron Green, where she dissects, we discuss, and you decide. COVID-19. Do not panic. Be prepared. If you plan to travel, keep updated on travel advisories from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Be sure to wash your hands often and have travel-sized hand sanitizers and disinfecting wipes readily available. Keep your distance from persons who are coughing and sneezing. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. This can help protect you from COVID-19 infection and other respiratory diseases. This message brought to you by Bahamas Ministry of Health in conjunction with Guardian Radio. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You are on the clock with Erin Green. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of November. And my guest today is Mr. Sidney Isaacs from Cat Island. I just, I just claim in you as Cat Island now. You don't know, but I have some roots in Cat Island. Um, it's beautiful to be a Bahamian, right? Because if legend is correct, I am related to the queen and I related to Cat Island people. And what could be better than the Cat Island people part? The Green, you nice, but Cat Island people part. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Green, and good morning, Bahamas. And uh, I hope you uh, take that association with the Queen through your inheritance and bring some of our stolen wealth back to Cat Island, our stolen heritage, our stolen Afrocentric culture. Bring that back for us. That's today. what Georgie Bundles <laughs> are for. I, I think you all didn't realize that. Anyway, while we're sitting here sort of smiling, we can really come to talk about an unfortunate event that happened uh, last week on Wednesday, the 27th yes. of October. Yes. Um, totally devastating. And it happens to be somewhat of a trend that we can neither afford or get used to in Cat Island because a few weeks prior to this disastrous event happening, um, I personally, on my way to the food store one morning, sat helplessly along with others, officials, and the general public alike, and watched a well-established church, the Church of God, Orange Creek, burn to the ground. Just a few, I guess I would say, feet away from all the water in the world, which is the salt water. And there was absolutely nothing that could have been done without the presence of what we desperately need right now in Cat Island, which is that because of the length of the island, we need at least two fire trucks that can, uh, you know, attend to these unfortunate circumstances when they do happen. Because leading into the necessity for these infrastructure, it's a whole developmental um, conversation that we could have on why it is more absolutely necessary to have these things in place than not. Yeah. So how many fire trucks exist right now in Cat Island? Um, there is one fire truck in Cat Island, but that fire truck is at the New Byte International Airport, and that is specifically yeah. forbidden to enter the roadways under any circumstances because of the contract involved with um, its responsibility there with civil aviation yeah. and there to the airport. 
And uh, whether or not that is working is questionable. As well. Yes. Right. And so even, even if somebody was bold enough to break the agreement to take it off of the compound, we're still not certain it could move. Exactly. And yeah. I know or at what capacity it would help, whether it's functional or not. Mm -hmm. um, I can't speak to that. I'm not saying that it isn't uh, yeah. working. I'm just saying that as far as I know, as a Cat Islander, uh, the operational capacity of that truck is questionable. Right. And you see, as far as I'm concerned, something like a regular maintenance uh, uh, si evaluation, right, assessment of the fire truck, that should be made public on the island. That should be posted once a month, just like you do with elevators. You, you sign off on it, and you post it, and anybody could see it. Exactly. Um, um, you know, like I say, the incidents of fires happening in Cat Island, prior to that, someone took the, 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 the silly initiative to light um, a brush, and um, like what we call dry grass in the yard. Yeah. That resulted in a whole, a whole structure on mm -hmm. Cat Island being burned down. And you could trace back, and what we have is a trend of us helplessly watching our hard-earned monies, our investment go up in smoke. Mm -hmm. And what people need to recognize in this country is development is severely stagnated when you don't provide certain infrastructure. Basic amenities. Basic infrastructure yeah. on these, uh, what we like to dysphemistically call lesser islands. Yeah. All right? There is nothing less about where I live and the people that I live with. Mm -hmm. All we get less of is the attention. And, and that needs to stop because what we got to understand is this. If I did not inherit the free land, if I did not have a substructure or some structure that I could cheaply renovate or rebuild around or use some cheap material to build a habitable structure, I am lost and locked out of the conversation without the basic amenities of a functional fire station and fire truck, I cannot obtain a, mo um, a mortgage loan from the local bank to go ahead and build something or buy land with the intention to build. So this is the... Oh, oh, re repeat that. Repeat that. Without the infrastructure of a, of a practical fire station on the island, I cannot obtain a mortgage from a lending institution, and we have one in Cat Island, or you don't even have to have the one in Cat Island. But the, what the banks want to find out is, are you insurable? Because every mortgage um, practitioner mm -hmm. wants to know that you qualify for insurance on what is essentially, until you pay it off, their property. Now, just, a, just an aside, yesterday I was listening to a sister show on the station, the hit back with Nahaja Black, and she uh, pointed out something that she learned very recently from a uh, friend in the insurance industry, that uh, although there was a VAT exemption on homeowner premiums, that the, the person suggested that the industry standard is that, that that VAT would be worked into your cost anyway, because why, why would the insurer pay for that? That was my, I added that part right there at the end. Um, and then here we go, finding out that residents on family islands face obstacles in buying land and building homes if there's not sufficient infrastructure in the area that they're in, in particular a, fire, a functioning fire station or system because the bank is, uh, the insurance company is concerned about the insurability. Yes. See, you can always build a home that's structurally sufficient to ward off against a major concern that has been heightened now by climate change, and that is hurricane. So even that is not an issue. The major issue is this. I give you a loan to build, buy a piece of property, and build a structure on it. Before that can be done, you walk out of that institution disappointed and empty-handed because the question they're going to ask is, uh, okay, how are you going to obtain insurance for this? Do you have this? And the major question, a lot of Cat Islanders want to go home, you know. Yeah, a, a lot, lot of people Island, want to go back. A lot of Cat Islanders want to go home, and they don't necessarily want to build on questionable 
generational or familiarly associated property because we don't get along that well. Yeah. So we want to identify a location, a locale, where John Q, somebody, or John Q real estate agency will sell me this mm -hmm. property because we all know the hassle in getting a piece of crown land. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, I don't have the funds up front. I have more than the adequate amount required for down payment and mobilization of construction. But thereafter, I need the bank. Mm -hmm. The bank is going to ask the insurance company uh, because they're one and the same. Um, can we do this? No, we can't. Why not? We don't have a fire station, and that is one of the main infrastructure. So that's how important it is. And so here we are, persons who were just affected last week, Wednesday, by a devastating fire, were occupying established businesses mm -hmm. that for most of them was their main source of income. They operate out of the gift that was given to them, which is the space on which to build out of pocket mm -hmm. through whatever efforts they got it done. And these structures were adequate. They fit all of the um, inspection that was needed for them to get occupancy with electricity and whatever limited running water infrastructure was provided at that site. Mm -hmm. And here they are now, without insurance, the struggle begins all over. And on top of that, valuable assets contained within those business that it's going, that's going to be enumerate when it comes to repurchasing them, yeah. all were destroyed. And uh, in the midst of a global supply chain uh, uh, backup? What they're going to find out, Aaron, is that what they paid $10 for when they were building previously or at the beginning is now $100. And that is not in any way, shape, or form a hyperbolic exaggeration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I want to... I want to say to the political class, like, uh, we got to stop practicing this intellectual dishonesty, you know, when we sort of suggest that people don't want to move back to the family island. They don't want that hard life. They don't want this. They don't want that. They're too used to Nassau living. But that's not what it is. Aaron, the majority of persons that I talk to, the majority of persons, I'm middle-aged, the majority of persons in their 30s, especially those who have descendancy or familiarity with the family island, do not want to get up in the morning and face the same road rage anxiety that is wearing them down to age them tremendously, uh, to be continuously caught up in this jungle, this traffic jungle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but concrete jungle. We have a metal mobile jungle mm -hmm. called traffic. That is a challenge each and every morning, each and every day, each and every evening. That's unrelenting, unceasing. Mm -hmm. and, and the density, the density is killing us. Like you say, on the roads, in the communities, in the homes. And people who are coming from family islands, they're not used to this. No. They're saying they no. speed we want to get, We want to get back to our peace and tranquility because there's a saying on the island, when I press brakes, I reach where I go in. Mm -hmm. Or I stop to hail somebody. Absolutely. You know, here in Nassau, you travel with one foot on the brakes and one foot on the gas. And most, in most cases, you just pump in the brakes because that's how slow you're moving yeah. in this unceasing traffic. Absolutely. Um, I want to throw out the text line numbers and the call-in numbers. You can call us at 323-6232, 325-4316, 325-4259. We're talking about the fire at the Regatta site in Cat Island last week. We're talking about the future of Cat Island and the Bahamas, because guess what? The future of the Bahamas rests solely in the future of Cat Island. And these problems that we're trying to solve in New Providence now, eventually, we're going to be trying to solve them on Cat Island. If, if the Cat Islanders are nice enough to let us come live there with them, since we in New Providence has been carrying on, like, why well, y'all don't stay on your island? Well, you know, I heard you talk about Cat Island may be the only island above water. Um, I estimated, and if you go to my Facebook page, you'll see uh, a rendition where just the tip of Mount Alvernia in the next 100 or 80 years will be the only thing above water if we continue on this devastating trend. If it slows down, Cat Island may be an archipelago unto itself because the island itself is not just 
are high hills. Yeah. There are valleys and lows that could be covered mm-hmm. by water, so therefore you may need a boat to traverse the new archipelago of Cat Island, which would be intermittent keys where sparse population would have to be maintained. And our big challenge to overcome then would be access to fresh water. So yeah. we are facing a devastating, devastating um, future if we don't correct what the Honorable Prime Minister went to address, which is the devastation of climate change. Mm-hmm. And like he said, the conversation needed to be had 100 years ago because we're living the present results of this um, scathing um, um, indictment on our behavior towards the environment, causing these things to happen in our lifetime. Absolutely. And for for the new entrance to the political class of 2021, right, I want to say to you all, right, like the members of the House, you all like the G20, right? <laughs> you all like the G20. And the members of the cabinet, you all like the G7, right? And don't make us get on that stage like Mia and, and, and the Honorable Brave Davis and the Honorable Mia Motley had to do to come talk to you all hard, right? Your ears should be open to us because like our Prime Minister said, we are definitely in this thing together. But I got some, let's, let's, let's talk a bit more about the, the extent of the damage. Um, in the article I read in the Tribune, one of the vendors indicated that she would have invested over roughly $10,000 just recently in outfitting that stall. And I thought, well, if you serious about Cat Island Rake and Scrape Festival, if you serious about participating in the economy of these islands, then you prepare yourself to take advantage of these moments. Uh, so we get a sense of the economic loss, but how will this impact the tourism product, A, and B, the cultural experience, the living of people in Cat Island? This site is one of the very, well, it is the only collective site where on the island, culture is on display seven days a week. You can go to this site any day of the week, and you can partake in authentic Cat Island cuisine, authentic Cat Island rake and scrape music. In fact, one of the stalls that was destroyed uh, was frequented by the legendary Bohog and the Rooters, and uh, guests would enjoy impromptu rake and scrape. That is bar none the best way to enjoy our culture unplugged. And so that is a considerable, thank God, all of the stalls weren't destroyed. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about five of the mainstay stalls. Mm -hmm. And what was so sad, Aaron, this this, this fire occurred around three, four o'clock in the morning. And by the time the public was made uh, um, aware of what was going on and, uh, and, and went to the site, if there was a fire truck present, two of those stalls could have been saved. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the amount of money, that amount of money is, imagine this, that's just what she recently claimed to invest in the stall. Imagine if you go back from the inception, from Mm -hmm. from the construction and, you know, the time and energy you put into building a, a, a clientele, a client base, and proving yourself to be a viable um, presence at this site with, with, with major competition, all of that now has to start from scratch. Yeah. And, you know, without insurance, without community participation, without philanthropy, these people faced a tremendous uphill battle if they can do it at all. Yeah. So that is what's so devastating. And, and the conversation goes back to the only crutch that we are supposed to be able to enjoy as business persons, and that is to have a re- reliable or reasonable amount of insurance to mitigate against what we face in light of climate change effect on our islands because our communities In Cat Island, our coastal communities, Communities, uh, and we face erosion, we face wind effect, which mm -hmm. was a major driving force in this fire on the island. Absolutely. Let's go to this call, and then we're going to get back to that. Caller, you're on the clock. Day on the clock, and good day from my comrade, my brother from Cat Island. Good day, sir. 
hail from the Johnsons from old by Listen, um, we are in uh, the age of technology now. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we rely on the government to make suggestions and to do this and do that and do the next thing for us. Mm-hmm. But with these little phones in our hand, we got the world at our disposal. I could be here sitting talking to you and Aaron on the thing I'm talking to someone on Australia at the same time. Mm-hmm. They have modern fire trucks now. They are like, they built like Julius. Okay? okay? They don't carry all that water and all that stuff. They carry the, the, the double cabs. They have a very powerful pump on the back of them. Okay. The only thing that's required is that each settlement have two or three hydrants, working hydrants, in the settlement. Those duallys can get there in a second. Mm-hmm. Any fire in the settlement, they hook up to the hydrant and they extinguish the fire. That is what we need to be looking at, in the, especially with islands like Cat Island, those long, stretch, far-flung islands. Okay. We don't need the modern fire trucks. They're too expensive. But the price of one fire truck, you can get about two or three duallys. Heavy duty, fire duallys. Okay? okay, and that's my contribution to the show today. Thank you All so right. much. Let me, let, me, let me just bounce off that. Um, mm-hmm. People have this misconception that the fire hydrant is, is there in the Bahamas to provide relief from fires to um, the community. And that is not the case. The fire hydrant is simply a flush-out tool for the water and sewage department. It does not provide the infrastructure for a truck to tie into to put out a fire. So our trucks depend on coming to a fire loaded with water. The most they can probably do at a fire hydrant is refill the truck, and if pressure is low in that area, you're screwed. So here is where we are, and I want to... Let the young man know there are certain responsibilities that we as a public cannot take on or, 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 or take from the government. Me having a private fire truck yeah. that the community volunteers run cannot satisfy an insurance company mm-hmm. as adequate enough. And it doesn't take away the state's obligation. Exactly. Yeah. And so we need these things to access certain funding Mm -hmm. and so you could talk about it yes it would be beautiful if every settlement can afford one of these small trucks i would be all for it i'll be the leader the fundraiser as long as there is an identified responsible individual or grouping Mm -hmm. that is that exists in these settlements to maintain house and manage Mm -hmm. these infrastructure that is so vital but for right now the government has to, not just Care Island, but every island, have a functional fire truck housed, maintained. And who is responsible for the fire um, um, department in this? It did the Royal Bahamas Bahamas Police Police Force. Force. They are present in every island. So train and send one or two individuals who can then further train community um, volunteers but these, play, these things need to put in place. They need to be run and operated by the government so that we, as individuals on these lesser developed islands, can access funding for future development. And it's not just, um, not just the resident or the home um, uh, the, the satisfaction, but also a lot of us want to build businesses. Mm-hmm. It's already difficult to navigate a business loan in this country. Imagine how impossible it is for someone to build and maintain a business, you have to have access to some serious funds. Yeah. And it is a commendable effort on behalf of businessmen in these communities that build these infrastructure with no crutch and only anxiety. I have a business. I am presently repairing. You could imagine I'm finished and within weeks, I have sit helplessly and a fire destroy everything that I put my hard-earned money and effort into, yeah. and I get zero compensation at the end of it. It is psychologically devastating. So kudos and, um, to the brave people who endure and who... Who, who, who continue yes. to strive from, from, from Meguana to Ragged Island to Long Key to Crooked Island. Long right, Island. To Long Kiara Island. Island. To Lutra. You know. To James Siston, the home of the biggest mosquito. I lie. <laughs> Current Island currently holds the record for the biggest mosquito on the planet. But to the people in James Siston, 
right? Straight up to people in Grand Bahama, those who do not live in the ports, yeah. right? Uh, we owe these people, and, and we have a duty to them. The state has an obligation to them. The citizen, the same. But more importantly, we, 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 we come to this realm, a mix of ethics and morality and, and duty, where we see soon that we, the bigoty Nasuvians, will soon have to turn to our family island brothers and sisters and beg them for refuge, beg them for protection, right? Well, Aaron, you know, what I noticed during the lockdown, and this is how significantly um, important the family islands are, during the last um, uh, lockdown and all of that during the pandemic, when you had to tow 10-mile-long lines to access food from the food store, I happened to experience firsthand the chaos at Porter's Key Dock because guess who was feeding their families in Nassau? Family Island Family people. Islanders. Mm -hmm. You're being sent crab, corn grits, mm -hmm. goat, ground corn, provision, yam, fish, you name it. Mm -hmm. You understand? And that was how a lot of us ate during the food shortages mm -hmm. and the food inaccessibility during the last... Um, early days of the pandemic. So if we don't pay close attention to what's happening out there in our family islands, I could build a farm, fire destroys it, there's nothing to, 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 to alleviate me in getting it. Having a reasonable consideration in my mind to abate the anxiety that, oh man, my, prop, my, my infrastructure could all be burned to smithereens. And then after that, there is no crutch called insurance to say, okay, at least I have some source of income to slowly rebuild. Mm -hmm. Now look here, this is the, the irony, right? Is it the irony? I can find the right word. I don't have on my UB hat right now. Um, but this is the irony of the Columbus story, right? Because it turns out that the future of Cat Island is the future of the Bahamas. Whether you all want to recognize Cat Island as San Salvador or not, <laughs> it is the future of the Bahamas. I want to say this to Clay Sweeten. You thought you was going to show me up yesterday. Sorry, forgive me, the Honorable Clay Sweeten. But you thought you was going to show me up in the house yesterday with all your pineapples. <laughs> Being the minister responsible for family island affairs, coming from Elutra and bringing the thing that made Elutra great. And the Bahamas great to the table. You thought you was going to show me up, but you can't show me up. Because why? Two things. I offer in a 10 million sea grape prize. To the person who comes up with a salt water fire extinguishing system. 10 million sea grape. Also, I come up with that slogan just now. The future of Cat Island is the future of the Bahamas. So I expect to see big things from you, Honorable Clay Sweeting. Because the whole country rests in your hands in case y'all didn't know it or not. I got another text here that says, Miss Green, no fire truck in Cat Island. Who is the MP by grab? Yeah, we can talk about that. But it ain't just there. I want to say big up to the people of Abaco, the volunteers and the volunteer fire team that helped the official team, Leanne Key and others. I want to say big up to y'all for continuing to provide the service for fellow residents and all of the volunteers of Family Island fire teams another text here hi Aaron Bahamians need to realize when they don't have basic things it's because they condone corruption that siphons necessary money needed for infrastructure etc see this at a state this is sort of at a state level let's take it to a personal level we the people need to stop spending resources for collective development on personal disposable experiences you hear that? We, the people, need to stop spending resources that are intended or should be for collective development on disposable personal experiences. We blame politicians too. I got plenty of time. Plenty of time for that. We got to look at ourselves sometimes. Thank you, Sydney Isaacs, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. You and Cat Island continue to be an inspiration to the people of the Bahamas. And I hope we see this. Y'all don't teeth my slogan now. The future of Cat Island is the future of the Bahamas. It's 11 a.m. That means it's time for Levon Miller and Unleashed. Uh, so stay tuned to 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk, all day. Oh, Cat Island, join the Rick and Scrape Man.
Two and a poker, poker my soaker, oh my baby, oh. Two and a poker, poker my soaker, oh my baby, oh.